Hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at unit 6.8, which is all about something called Hess's Law. And this is the last subunit in unit 6. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to make sure is a firm understanding before we even talk about Hess's Law is that some reactions occur in one step, just like one shot, and many other reactions occur in multiple steps. Uh, we actually saw this in our kinetics unit about, you know, um, what are called reaction mechanisms where you have, remember, elementary steps. It's an over, basically saying that an overall reaction can take place in one step, but it can also take place in multiple steps. And <clears throat> what Hess's law says is that from the original reactants to your final products, the change in enthalpy for that overall process is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. And I always think of this sort of like if you are leaving your home and you're driving and you're trying to get to some particular destination. If you decide to drive straight there without making any stops, that would be like a reaction taking place in one step. Whereas, let's say between you leaving your house and getting to your final destination, you stop off and you get a coffee at Starbucks and then you stop and get gas and then you stop off at the grocery store to pick something up and then you drive to your final destination. You've done, you've gotten to your final destination in a series of steps, but the overall distance between your original location, your house, and your final destination is the same whether you took, you know, in one step or in multiple steps. So that's kind of the, the essence of, of Hess's law. So we're going to look at this in terms of chemistry with some chemical equations. For example, okay, the reactions that are shown in white, those would be like elementary steps. What's in the sort of tan color, that is the overall reaction. And so what this is saying is this particular reaction takes place in two steps. And if you guys will remember back from the kinetics chapter, we, we did some of this, this same thought process. Remember that anything that occurs when you're looking at a reaction mechanism like that, anything that occurs in identical form on opposite sides of the arrow can be canceled out. So like that's gone and that's gone. And I believe that's it. And so when I add these equations together, here is my overall equation and the overall heat change is simply the heats of the individual elementary steps added together. Okay, so essentially this is saying the first step, oops, required 180 kilojoules. I use the word required because it's positive. It's an endothermic process. The second elementary step, the second part of this process released 112 kilojoules. I say released because it's a negative value indicating an exothermic process, but when I add these two processes together, overall, this is an endothermic reaction, okay? So you can look at it kind of like this, like a reaction mechanism. You could also look at it graphically. So let me show you this exact same set uh, setup here, these same reactions, but in a graphical form. So that first elementary step, if you'll remember, was endothermic. And look, guys, we're going uphill 
from the reactants to what would probably be considered an intermediate, okay? And then from these intermediates down here, okay, remember the second elementary step was exothermic, but this guy was the overall change in heat for the reaction. And overall, on a graph, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that delta H is the distance on the y-axis between your original reactants and your final products. So this is just a more visual way to look at what we just were looking at on the previous slide. Now, what is a Hess's law problem going to look like? Okay, well, here's what it's going to look like. You will be given an overall reaction, and then you will be given maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five different elementary steps. And the question is going to say, calculate the delta H for this overall reaction. Your job will be to rearrange, to rearrange those elementary steps so that when you add them together, certain, you know, the things that you want to cancel out do cancel out. And when you add them together, once you've crossed everything out that should, you end up with the overall reaction that they gave us. So you end up with the reaction that you should. And your job is to figure out how do I rearrange these elementary steps so that when I add them all together, I get the reaction that I am supposed to. So that's what we're gonna look at right now. So when I say rearrange elementary steps, what do I mean by that? Well, you might have to flip an elementary step around, okay? Like, let's say this is the reaction for one of the elementary steps you're given, but you need to flip it around. Remember, we've actually talked about this already. What happens to the delta H value of a reaction when you reverse it? You simply change its sign. Okay, so again, when I say you need to manipulate these elementary steps, what do I mean by that? I mean, you may have to flip a reaction around. What else might you have to do? Well, you might have to multiply an equation times some number to make the coefficients correct. So think about it. From here to here, what did I do to this equation? I multiplied it times 3. All the coefficients have been multiplied by 3. And what happened to the delta H value? Remember, Heat is an extensive property. If you change the coefficients, you change the delta H value. So I'm going to multiply my heat by that number as well. So those are just some examples of what do I mean by manipulating these reactions. So we're going to walk through an example together. Right? And as I said, this is what a Hess's Law situation looks like. You are given, this is an overall reaction, and it wants us to calculate the delta H for that reaction. And what are we given? We're given three elementary steps to work with. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through sort of the way, the method that I use. Right? You may use a different method, but this is what makes mo the most sense to me. I start off looking at my overall reaction, and I look at my first reactant, O gas. I look up in my elementary steps, and I see, okay, where is O gas? Here it is. Look at the overall reaction, ladies and gentlemen. That oxygen is on the reactant side. And on my elementary step, it's not. So I need to flip that 
that elementary step. I'm going to have to reverse that elementary step so that O gas is on the reactant side. What else am I going to have to do? Look at the coefficient. In my elementary step, it has a coefficient of 2. And down here, in my overall, it doesn't. It has a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to have to divide all of the coefficients by 2, which means I'm also going to have to divide my heat value by 2. All right. So I'm going to get to a new screen, and I'm going to rewrite this flipped around. So my first elementary step is going to look like this. O gas goes to 1 half O2 gas. And I'm going to write the delta H value out next to it. When I flip that reaction around and divide it by 2, let me just make sure I've got this right, OK? It's going to become negative and divided by 2, that gives me this number. OK. So what I the, the way that I sort of think of it is, OK, I have taken care of that first reactant. I've taken care of it. It will end up in my final overall. And ladies and gentlemen, once you have used an elementary step, you can cross it out because you're only going to use the elementary steps one time. So I don't need to look at that one anymore. Let's move on to our next reactant, H gas. And here it is. Okay, now is it on the correct side? No. So I'm going to flip that elementary step around. That's going to change my delta H values sign. And just like that other one, it's got the wrong coefficient. I'm going to divide all my coefficients by 2 so that I end up with a coefficient of 1. So let me get back to that other screen where I was writing all of the half reactions. OK, so we're going to write this. H gas, because I flipped it around. And the new H value, when I change its sign and divide by 2, I end up with that. OK? All right, so let me get back to this screen. Okay, so at this point now, I have taken care of that reactant, and I'm going to scribble through this equation because now I have used it, I can't use it again. All right, last part, I need to take care of OH gas. I only have one other elementary step as my option. Here it is. This time, it is on the correct side. OH gas needs to be on the product side, and it is. So I'm not going to have to flip this one around. But does it have the correct coefficient? No, it doesn't. So once again, I'm going to need to divide all of my coefficients by 2. That's also going to make my, I'm also going to divide delta H by 2 as well. So let me get back to the screen where I was writing all of my half reactions. And let's write out what we've got. 1 half O2 plus 1 half H2. Leads to OH. And the delta H value, I didn't have to flip that one around, so I don't need to change its sign. Is that. Okay. Now, I took care of everything in my overall reaction. Let's make sure that what cancels out 
is what's supposed to cancel out. Let's add these equations together just to make sure that we end up with the reaction we are supposed to. So this can go, this can go, and that's it. So what am I left with? O gas plus H gas leads to OH gas. And that is the that matches the overall reaction I was supposed to get. So let me add these numbers together. And this is actually what I was supposed to calculate. This is my final answer. They wanted us to calculate the overall heat of the reaction. So I'm going to put a box around it because that is my final answer. Okay, now again, we were given that final reaction, so that overall. So did I really need to go through this process and add the equations together? I would highly recommend doing that just to ensure that what you've added together is the right combination of equations. Okay, I highly recommend this process. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna have you all do one on your own. However, before you start it, let me just give you a piece of advice that you're really not gonna need so much for this question, but you will in the future. If you're gonna use the method that I do, which is I focus my attention on the overall equation and I take it piece by piece by piece, okay? There are times where like, let's say that H2 gas was not the product. Let's say it was over here. Let's say it was my very first reactant. Look up at these three elementary steps that I'm given. I see H2 gas in three different locations. And so you might be thinking like, well, wait a minute, which, which equation should I start with? What I would highly recommend, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going through this step by step by step process and going one part of the reaction at a time, if one part of your reaction appears in multiple places, multiple elementary steps, skip that one. Come back to it later. Focus your attention or at least start this process with compounds that only appear in one place. For example, methane gas, if I move my eyes up to these elementary steps, it only appears in one place. So that seems to me like a good place to start. Okay, now remember, as soon as you have used one elementary step, cross through it. You're not gonna use it again, okay? I realize that there are four, four parts to this overall reaction and there's only three elementary steps. I promise you the hydrogens will work out if you did it correctly. So I want you guys to try this one on your own, see how you do. All right, let's check your answers, see how you did. This one was a little tricky because you had some fractions. For example, right here, you get to cross out one half H2. And right here, if you're gonna cancel out one half H2, then three halves goes down to two halves. And two halves is just one plus two. So that gives me three hydrogen gas, okay? So as I said, guys, when once you fix this one, this one, and this one, the hydrogens just kind of ended up working out on their own, and that, that happens a lot, okay? But that's a perfect example of a Hess's Law problem. I personally find these, these Hess's Law problems to be kind of fun, I mean, it's, it's almost like a little puzzle when you have to figure it out. So if you would like a challenge question, I have one for you. If you don't, then you, you're, you're done with this video. But 
for those of you that find these problems kind of fun, which I do, I mean, whatever, um, here is a challenge one for you. And I will put up the answer so that you can check it. All right, so if you wanna check your answer, this one actually isn't that hard. It's just, it's kind of a nightmare for fractions and adding and subtracting fractions, but it's actually not that tricky. So see how you did, here's the answer. Dun, da, da, da. Final answer is negative 11 kilojoules. And again, the tricky part to this problem is just changing fractions around. So, that's just, that was just kind of a little bit of a challenge, challenge question, just for fun. And I realized that my idea of fun might be a little skewed, but that's why I'm a chemistry teacher. So anyway, um, that is the end of unit six, and I hope you have learned lots and lots this unit. So I look forward to seeing you in our next unit.